Hello viewers, Alan here. Welcome to my workshop. Um, the other day somebody asked me if I could explain to them how a differential worked. And I thought, well, okay, probably, but it'd be a lot easier if I had a working model that I could use to show it. So I knocked something up from my old boyhood Meccano, and uh, people familiar with these things will recognise what's going on straight away. In the car situation you normally have four what they call spider gears here, and this central spool which can rotate with the wheels or allow um, one wheel to turn at a different speed in relation to the other. So when you're going around a corner, the inside wheel uh, doesn't turn as quickly as the outside wheel. Anyway, no magic with any of that. <coughs> Excuse me. But it got me to, oh, and the way I had to make it was working with the gears that I had. In a car situation, they actually used bevel gears there. Well, I didn't have any of those. But it actually got me to thinking, can you make a differential that only uses spur gears instead of the bevel gears and such? Turns out the answer is yes. So I had a go. Okay, so I found uh, this sort of a schematic illustration of what a spur gear differential should look like. Now I've already made, um, you'll see in the previous video, two gears that can be these side gears and um, a couple of pairs of um, pinions. Um, so I've got these guys set up so they'll um, fit on there. So um, <coughs> What do I need to make up? Oh, and I've, I've got a six millimeter bit of bar stock that I can use for the the, the uh, pinion spindle. So I'll need to make a spacer to keep these the right distance apart, and some um, shafts for these pinions to sit on. And um, I th I'm thinking I'll. Uh, just go with this six millimeter stuff and make another spacer to uh, keep the uh, pinion over there <laughs> instead of floating around because that they have to overlap uh, but um, just so you get the idea of how it's supposed to work they have to overlap but uh, sort of like that If you can get the get the idea. Anyway, um, so I think the first thing to do is to make some side pieces, and I've got an idea for how to do that. Right, so I need some side plates. I don't know what else to call them to mount these uh, pinions on these pairs of pinions, and um, it needs to be they need to be about this size, which is about seventy diameter. And rather than starting off with some 70 odd bar and trying to slice some pieces like that off, I started to start with these. These are a washer or some washers I found in a car park actually. Anyway, um, they're the right size OD, but obviously got a massive hole in them. So I've machined up uh, some bushes with an 8 mil hole in them and uh, we'll just press that in. I've gone for um, point, I think it's 0.05 um, undersize on the hole. Or interference fit, whatever you want to call it. So let's see how that works out. Right. Engaged a bit off to one side at the moment. Let's try and get it under the centre of the push. Right, let's see how that goes. Hopefully that's going in. It's meeting a bit of resistance. Let's back off and have a look. Seems to be going in alright though. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, I think it's going in alright. Hard getting some light. Hard getting the light. So. Anyway, let's press on, <laughs> pardon the pun. Right, let's 
some solid resistance there. Oh, I think that's pretty good. And I left it just slightly proud on this side so I can flush this off in the lathe if I can be bothered. Anyway, so that's going to give me um, the material and the space that I need for mounting the pinions. So I'm going to make the other one now. Okay, so now I want to face both sides of these plates, which would be the sides of the uh, differential carrier or differential housing, I guess. And so I need to mount them in the chuck, and they're not very thick, so I've got to hold them on the tips of the jaws. So to make positioning easier, I've got my um, chuck backstop in there. A bit of scrap, which I've machined as a spacer. So then I can put my um, piece there. Somewhere like that. I'm going to just wedge it in position using the tail stock. That feels pretty good. Yep, and I just okay. I think that'll hold that firmly enough. So we can get set up now to do a facing cut. Okay, so checking out progress so far, we've got our side pieces, a nice fit on there, one of those, you didn't see me make it but I made a little separating bush up, keep these two guys at a reasonable distance, that's all that, and you can see a bit more clearly perhaps that these guys will go on there. So um, I've been numbing and ahhing a little bit about uh, design detail here. My original idea was to um, drill the boss and put a grub screw in there because this needs to be, as I understand it, fixed on the end of the half shaft sticking out the side here. Um, but from the picture you can see that the way they've shown it is the boss on the side of the gear becomes the stub inside the bearing. Uh, and then they're showing splined half shafts. Well, I'm not going anywhere near that. So that's a, a challenge though. I could bore this out to match that diameter. Could do that. But then I've got to uh, be able to fix this to my shaft. Um, so I could do that with Loctite and um, that would then allow this to move right up to the, the, the other face of that gear. But I think really for what I'm trying to do, which is really just showing how it all works and having a bit of fun, it's never going to actually be used for anything. I think I prefer to have it like that where it's more easy to see what's actually happening. So I think I'm going to stick with my idea of um, drilling this boss and putting the grub screw in. And so I think that's the bit I'll do next, drill those and, and then I can mark these plates out um, for the axles which will hold the pinions. 
So I wanted the grub screw to be in the centre of the hub on the uh, the drive gear, and so I used the centre finder in, in both uh, X and Y directions to uh, find that point. Right, so I want to drill the whole pattern for the pinion shafts now, and so to do that, I've mounted these side plates, or will mount these side plates, on an arbor. Um, in fact, the same arbor that I used for mounting the gears when I cut them. Uh, anyway, and I need to find the center of that, so the centering indicator makes short work of that. You can see I've got that um, zeroed in. So now I know where this plate is. I've calculated the position of the holes for the um, pinion shafts by looking at the pitch circle diameter of the two gears, so the large gear and the small gear, and the two pinions, and then it's pretty simple geometry, to uh, trigonometry, to work out the hole pattern. So let's get on and drill the holes. Now, I guess we'll find out if I drill the holes in the right place. The, the reason I mounted it on this arbor is so I could swap the other one over without having to do another setup. It's quite a firm fit, right. Right, well, I'm pleased to uh, report that they all, all the gears fit on there in their correct positions and mesh nicely. They can't turn in this configuration, of course, but if I pull this pair off, yeah, they can turn. So, it's okay to draw the same pattern in the other plate now. I need uh, four pinion shafts uh, to do that, and um, I've rough, I want them to be thirty. I want them to be thirty-seven point two millimeters long. I rough cut them to set to size, and I've faced one end. Now I've faced the other end and bring them to length in this setup. So I've got a, a chuck backstop behind here, which is uh, dialed in and set, so I can get my required length. So this is 38.4 at the moment so we'll just take it down in a couple of passes. If everything has gone as planned, that'll be 37.2 long. And let's check. I don't know how well you can see that, but we're pretty close. Thirty-seven point two one. I'd say that's pretty good. Thirty-seven point two. There you go. Oh well, I don't know. It's around there somewhere, isn't it? It's not the most precise way of measuring things in the world. Anyway, pretty close. So now I have to tap and drill each end of the pinion shafts for an M4 screw. So it's a three point three millimeter uh, tap hole for the tap. All right, get ready for some tapping action. Somewhere there. There 
and you've seen tapping a thousand times so I'll bring you back when that's finished. I'll just check that with one of the screws. Yeah, beautiful. So now I need to make uh, four 10 millimeter long spaces to hold the uh, pinions, help hold the pinions in the right place. So I've got my backstop set up in here. I'll just put that in there. And give that a very light clean up on one end. And then um, bring it to length. slightly higher there yeah I didn't go far enough all right <clears throat> now I can turn that round and bring it to length Check, make sure we've got 10 millimeters. Now you can see, you're going to see it's pretty darn close. All right, so we'll break this setup down. Now, take the take the backstop out. Put this back. I can go right in, I guess. Now I have to drill a six mil hole through each of them, all the way through. Deeper the end of the hole. Good enough for that.
Right, one spacer. Three more to do. Right, so I've finished making the pieces and it's time to put it all together. So you can see, um, that's one of the pinion shafts, you saw me making those. And that's a 16mm spacer, oh no sorry, that's a 10mm spacer, you saw me making those. Um, see this goes on there. These are some 16mm ones, which I didn't uh, film making. Alright, and uh, to help line everything up, we'll stick it on one axle. And I'm going to get these the gears lined up. Like that. Spacer. Other gear. Actually what I might do is just make sure the, uh, it's not important but I'll do it anyway. Make sure that the um, um, clamping screw holes line up. I don't know why, it just appeals to me to do that. Alright, and we flip this over. Or did I? No, I just put it on like that. And hopefully these holes line up. screws on the other side are, are tightened but these I'll just leave a bit loose for the moment all right and now to keep everything all aligned we'll push that out with the, the other half shaft I suppose you'd say I want to push that in so at the end of it is in the middle of that bush I didn't make a, a feature which would guarantee that to happen oversight perhaps So we'll use my thumb as the indexer, something like that. So now we can do these two screws up. It's probably pretty obvious, but this is meant to be a desktop ornament, not something that will actually be used. So there are issues with bearings and all sorts that I just ignored. Um, right, so we can tighten these up now. And there we have it. So it run pretty smoothly. So, time to put it into uh, its carrier, uh, which is just being painted, so I've got to wait for the paint to dry. Bring it back when that's ready to go. Okay, well I think that turned out rather well. Um, everything turns freely, the gear, gears mesh correctly, and there's very little friction. Considering there are no bearings or seals or anything, that's uh, as good as I could have hoped for. So, original objective was to create a model that shows how a spur gear differential works. This of course is actually this, the differential centre, and drive would be applied to one of the side plates, either by teeth cut in the outer edge here, which is I think how the original Mini did it, with teeth in the outer edge of the crown mill or with a bevel gear on the side, um, either way but for a desktop paperweight I'm not going to worry about that so uh, yeah, quite pleased with the way that turned out well making that was a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed it as well in any case, thanks for watching and um, look forward to seeing you on the next one, cheers